Good evening, it's time for the news on Times Television, TTV, and here with me, Ronald Mpaso, face the headlines. 32 members of parliament and 65 councillors failed to declare their assets. Ijenko spends 10 billion kwasha in three years to fight siltation. And in our special report, Matthews Cassandra explores challenges that people living with HIV and AIDS face in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. We have these and other stories. Stay with us. In our first story, the Office of the Director of Public Officers Declarations has revealed that 32 members of parliament and 65 councillors did not declare their assets in accordance with the law. This came up in a presentation by the office to a parliamentary monitoring committee meeting and more in this report by Rebecca Jimjeka, which is being read in the studios by Mande Pondani. During the meeting, the Director of Public Officers Declarations, Michael Josiwa, confirmed that over 30 members of Parliament and 65 councillors did not declare their assets during the year in question. Among other things, Josiwa says they have embarked on a law review to address some grey areas in the Act that establishes the office. According to Josiwa, some listed offices also omitted some assets in their declarations, which was laid bare during physical verification of the assets. In the declarations. Yes, the law is very clear. Uh, anyone who does not declare within the term period stipulated by law, in the first place, is supposed to explain the reason why. So, if the reasons are not according to what the law may prescribe, or indeed are not reasonable, the law says reasonable cause, then sanctions follow. And of course, apart from that, if he or she does not respond for no reason, then the consequences also follow. And as you are aware, the law is very clear. One of the consequences for nanny declaration for no reasonable cause is removal from office. And for members of parliament, removal from office is by way of asking the speaker to declare. It's very unfortunate that we had some um, members of parliament and some councillors not declaring their assets in the 2020-2021 uh, financial year, which is very unfortunate. As law lawmakers, we are supposed to be exemplary. Therefore, we expected as a monitoring committee that all MPs would have declared their assets. Uh, so as a monitoring committee, what we do is make a follow-up with uh, the office of the public officers, uh, you know, declaration, asset declaration, so that at least we should know who they are, and then we make a follow-up with them. And um, the same will be done in the councils, where we have councillors who haven't done the declaration. Of course, I know in some cases, I'll give you an example of Manza District Council, where the issue maybe it's like, uh, you know, a breakdown in the communication, who handles declaration at a council level, district level. Because sometimes if you ask these councillors, they'll tell you that we, we filled the forms, we made the declaration, but maybe on the way they never reached it, uh, the secretariat for Audipod. So we are going to make a follow-up and see, is it uh, that they really did not uh, do the declaration, or is it that maybe uh, on the way the forms never reached the uh, office of Audipod? The Office of the Director of Public Office and Declarations was set up in 2013 to help control massive plunder of public funds after the cash gate scandal at Capitol Hill. The government has announced the commencement of the second disbursement of funds under the urban cash transfer intervention. The initiative targets city dwellers in Blanta, Lilongwe, Zomba and Mzuzu who are facing the economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Mande Pondani with a report. In a statement, Secretary for Gender, Community Development and Social Warfare, Isaac Katopola, says the intervention seeks to cushion 199,000 vulnerable households against the socioeconomic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. The intervention is being implemented in geographically targeted poverty hotspots 
based on the city's socioeconomic profiles and household vulnerability assessment. According to the statement, beneficiaries are qualifying and selected ATREPO and low-income households who primarily derive their livelihoods from the informal sector and depend on piecework and petty trading. Payments commence in February 2021 with monthly cash injunctions of 35,000 kwacha for three months. All the households that got their January and February payments amounting to 70,000 kwacha will receive their last payment of 35,000 kwacha for March, whereas newly verified households will receive payments for February and March 2021 with the last payment scheduled for April 2021. The cash transfers are being delivered electronically through mobile money service providers. The program is being supported by the government of Malawi and its cooperating partners. Electricity generation company Ijenko has spent 10 billion kwacha in the last three years to fight siltation in some of, in some of its stations along the Shire River. Ijenko Chief Executive Officer William Liabunya says siltation has in recent times dealt a heavy blow to electricity generation. Some of Malawi's most important power stations are located on the river Shire, but rampant cutting down of trees in the catchment area of the river has proved a setback to electricity generation. Eric Msikiti has a report. Almost all of Malawi's electricity power generation stations lie on the Shire River. The situation makes power generation more vulnerable to human activities along the banks. For example, rampant cutting down of trees exposes the soil, making it easier for running water to wash it into one of Malawi's most important rivers, the Shire. The soil and the debris that comes with it in turn accumulates at the power generation plants, making it almost impossible for the turbines to move and generate power. Lia Bunya says Ejenko has been spending billions to remove such silt and rated debris for the company to generate the much needed electricity. And some of that silt also goes into the machine and disturbs the generation operations. And as such, for us to reclaim those uh, dams, we have spent almost 10 billion through contractors that have been helping us to reclaim those dams. But planting trees could make all the difference, according to Liabunya. When we are talking of having water in the rivers, it's because of the trees that are along the rivers that give that preservation. That Long and short term solutions to the challenges. Uh, in the uh, long term, we need to uh, plant more trees and we also need to uh, speak to our people in the areas. Uh, to ask them not to uh, cut trees unnecessarily. Around uh, uh, this uh, part of uh, Africa, uh, we are talking to friends like Zambia, Mozambique, uh, for us to do some interconnections which would help us uh, get some power. Ejenko has been engaging various stakeholders to plant trees along the Shire River and its inlets. It engaged the Association of Environmental Journalists in Malawi recently. The association's vice president, Wesi Nyirongo, says journalists are some of the worst affected during electricity blackouts. We talk about uh, the power blackouts. Sometimes our work is affected because um, of the power blackouts. So it is very important for us to take part in this exercise. Among others, Ejenko also works with communities to ensure that trees planted along the rivers survive. In our special report, Matthews Cassandra explores the challenges that people living with HIV and AIDS in the area of traditional authority Chitukula in Lilongwe are facing because of COVID-19. Organizations that we are supporting them have scaled down interventions to instead focus on the pandemic. This has resulted in people living with HIV facing challenges in relation to their travel to health facilities. Apart from failure to go to hospitals for treatment, there is also the problem of lack of proper diet as their health condition requires, as Matthews Cassandra now reports. Established that most of those on antiretroviral therapy, ART, living in rural areas, are hit the hardest. One of them, whom we should call Mavis, age 74, is one of the people left in the cold after some organizations suspended their operations. She is a mother of nine and tested HIV positive in 2014. When Times crew visited her at her home at Chitugula village, she was cooking pumpkins, the only meal for the day. 
I need 20,000 kwacha to start a business so that I can be able to buy food and at least have proper meals before taking my drugs. Apart from having challenges in having proper meals, she travels about 10 kilometers on foot once in a month to go to Lombardy Health Center where she gets her ARVs. The suffering has not spared James Mapkin, who has two wives and two children in his family that are HIV positive. His challenge is now to get money for transport for himself and the two wives to a health facility every month for medication. <laughs> Here in the village, if you find 1,500 kwacha, it is very difficult for someone as of, uh, as of nowadays, as we are in the rainy season. It is difficult for people who are living with HIV to have their resources as they need them. Another HIV positive person affected by COVID-19, whom we should call Mabel, lost her husband in 1991 and was enrolled on ART in 2000. She says because of COVID-19, she can no longer attend support groups meetings where organizations used to give them some lunch allowances. She used the same allowances to pay for transport every month to Lombardy Health Center. But for now, she has no choice but to walk to the facility for about five hours. We normally leave for Lombardy Health Center around 4 a.m. on foot while hungry as well as with no money. We arrive at the facility around 9. Unfortunately, officer. After coming in on COVID, the government uh, gave out a directive that uh, large groups should not be meeting. And also, because of that, there was also a directive from the Ministry of Health to ensure that clients who are coming to the facility not spend much time. Meanwhile, health activist Maziko Matemba has called for doubled efforts from authorities to assist the affected individuals. Constantly listening to those voices and those key stories, uh, very critical for us to make uh, uh, HIV and services better and also accessible to many without any disruption or discrimination. So this has to be addressed by the look at what we're doing now and what can be better. later. HIV care and treatment program officer in the Ministry of Health Branch Wandira says the ministry recognizes health system challenges that have come with the COVID-19. He says through the Department of HIV and AIDS, the ministry is supporting decentralization of HIV services to mobile clinics throughout all the 29 districts. You're watching the news on Times Television TTV. We now take a break. He'll be back shortly. <laughs> If there's one thing that all soaps do, it's wash. From buckets to basins, bathrooms to streams, and everything in between. <laughs> all soaps wash. Yes, but Protex is different. Its reinvented formula with flaxseed oil boosts your skin's natural anti-germ defenses by 10 times more, protecting you against 99.9% .9 of germs. So what keeps us healthy? Protex! Good health starts here. Think. By the end of this battle, I'm still a better drink Well, this people bought with you, look at everybody's face Maybe you should like a flavor or your aftertaste 
Mi mapasa hantu zomwe ya makumba Jago majobe pako majo solo wa tumba Ina ni magonde doa ndi ana omwe Adumbu ka ajewa, asena ndi alomwe Fanzi ina goma, I come in different flavors Ose wa okoma, pineapple orange Lemon ndi cola, iwe yo ndi mbola Antu wa cola Kuskuru ama konda thumbs up Kunchito pa lunch ama feel a thumbs up Mabana ndi madonna ama konda thumbs up I'm the best out here, everybody back up Define your surroundings with the color of your choice. Make it warm, creative, friendly, and vibrant. Coat textures. Durable color options. With up to 1,200 color shades to choose from. Be it economy range or premium range paints. Innovative paint and color technology in every drop. Available in Blantar, Build Africa and Limby Corner Mart Building and in Nilongwe along M12 Road close to Gateway Mall. Tropical Paints, your world in color. Welcome back. An investigation by the Office of the Ombudsman has exposed maladministration in the recruitment of some senior officers at the Central Medical Stores Trust. According to the findings, former President Peter Mtarika, Office of the President and Cabinet, and the Department of Statutory Corporations are all part of the mess. Ombudsman Martha Chizuma released the report on Thursday on the investigation of alleged and procedural improper and irregular and unfair dismissals at the Central Medical Stores Trust. Ombudsman Martha Chizuma says the investigation was conducted after receiving an anonymous complaint from people who called themselves anonymous concerned citizens. Chizuma says the former president exercised the powers that he did not have in appointing Kalani as he was a wrong appointing authority. Chizuma also faults the Department of Statutory Corporations for bulldozing itself in the appointment of Kalani by presenting his name to the appointing authority. Kalani's appointment has since been nullified. Chizuma has also nullified a three-year contract for Director of Procurement Rex Kuyeli because his hiring by the Office of the President and Cabinet was illegal and irregular. She says although Kuyeli has served most part of his contract, his attainment of Director of Procurement position was through backdoor means and an act of favoritism, a development Chizuma says Malawians should frown upon. She has since recommended that Kuyeli should revert to his old position of senior logistics officer. The investigation clears chief executive officer for the trust, Festoni Kawopa, from allegations that he employed the director of procurement. Chizuma has since directed the OPC as a matter of reform area to provide for a clear policy and legal framework that will clearly define and give mandate to the office of the Comptroller of Statutory Corporations by 13th March 2021. There is high demand for pork on the market in Nzuzu, times can reveal. Big farmers under the Mzuzu Livestock Cooperative have confirmed the development, saying they are a bit of growth of their social and economic status owing to the booming of pork business in the city. The cooperative, which has a membership of 86 farmers, says such a demand is enabling them to make reasonable profits. Sam Kalimira has a report. Vice Chairperson for the Cooperative, Lameke Nirenda, disclosed that apart from securing a market in most butcheries, they also have a steady market to supply 1,000 kilograms of pork per week to Mzuzu ShopRight. Nirenda said most members of the Cooperative are now economically independent, which is an achievement for the growth. I don't suffer for school fees. I get fees from the guy. I have built houses 
coming from fixed. I am receiving more than 500 sovereign per month because of figure. Mzimba North District Animal Health and Livestock Development Officer Lecho Gaunda said pig farming is profitable, adding her office provides all the necessary technical support to the farmers. We have included uh, uh, giving farmers, buying the, the uh, improved breeds of pigs to give them, those that give birth into many pig rates and also they grow very fast. So with that we are hoping to say we have a lot of pigs and we manage to, 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 to supply to our market. Meanwhile, the farmers have secured a 72 million guaja grant from the Agricultural Commercialization Project to boost their agribusiness. Agriculture Commercialization National Coordinator Ted Nankuma said he is happy that the government project, which aims at assisting smallholder farmers to graduate to commercial farming, is now yielding positive results. We have 30 productive alliances on the ground. These are the ones that we have approved and we are giving out the matching grants. They have started receiving. But we have approved more than 30. We are talking about 40 something, uh, 44 thereabout, that are ready. But as you know, that for, for us to disperse the matching grant, they have to first of all uh, produce the 30% um, I mean, their contribution. The government secured a 95 million United States dollars loan from the World Bank to improve smallholder farmers from substance to business agriculture with much emphasis on value adding to farming produce, including livestock products. That's the news for now, but before we go, the headlines again. 32 members of parliament and 65 councillors failed to declare their assets. Ejenko spends 10 billion kwasha in three years to fight siltation. And in our special report, Matthews Cassandra explored the challenges that people living with HIV and AIDS face in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. You've been with me, Ronald Mpaso, but you can get more on these and other stories by visiting our website, www.times.mw, liking our Facebook page, Times360 Malawi, and following us on Twitter, at Times360 Malawi. Remember to wash your hands regularly, observe social and physical distance, and mask up.